everybody's presence here and we'll go in just since it's just nice for him to have as much time as possible that we'll go in and get started and then when he gets back just let him take over but hey, if you will just take some deep breaths and that's kind of a good plan all the time and just to continue to just uh, allow your divine presence to be in this space in this moment and as we continue to breathe uh, this is from the daily word old thoughts and old conditions are as waters that have passed away in this new year there is only this God. turns it on see how much there recording. is only yeah, yeah, yeah. good and then we, we, we I begin to this new year yeah, we're gonna knowing to that, that God is but in some, it but, but sometimes therefore only good is in okay. it okay. I'm gonna get it moving. I begin this new year with faith okay. Okay. confidence and joyous anticipation in this new year I anticipate only good I anticipate new happiness new health new courage new strength, new freedom. I anticipate new friends, new opportunities, new achievements, and new ideas. I begin this year anew with God. I discard old thoughts. I change old habits. I release old limitations. I reorder my life. I give thanks to God for this opportunity to begin anew. With God's help, I let go of past limitations and take hold of new good. Anxious thoughts, regrets, or painful memories about past events no longer have place in my mind. They are as waters that are passed away. There's a couple up there. I begin this new year with spirit. This is Psalms 84. Passing through the valley of weeping, they make it a place of spring. So just I'm so grateful for everybody's presence and uh, and just to, uh, for those who don't know Paul, and I think most everybody's uh, probably looks like in the classroom has been available for Paul's past uh, presentations or even outside of Unity. Just he, he's one of our favorite uh, presenters to just bring such a, a light to history and, to, and his way of sharing it to me has just really changed my way of seeing a lot of perspectives about historical events and, and different circumstances and especially some of the religious uh, talks he's given just really brings a light to just brings it into a different different form for me and, and just trust that uh, this these three uh, we'll have three presentations this month and hope you can join us for all of them and and on this one we're talk we will be addressing just uh, Greek or Athens mainly just uh, uh, pre or just the part of that Athens that happens of played in in our history. So just so appreciate Paul you being here and thank you for coming. All right, Paul, bring it up. I might try to get a wide angle so you don't have to move this. Thank you, Barry, and okay. thank you all. It's always a treat like to uh, start yeah, like a my new year here at Kennedy. This no. is my okay. first um, presentation of the year as it has been for many years. So it's my good luck way of starting the year and I thank you for the opportunity. Um, Thursday, this, uh, this week, was Epiphany, which means we're at the season of the Boar's Head Festival. Now, for many of you here, you've heard this spiel before, but if you haven't, I want you to listen to this opportunity. Every year at TCU, they put on folks over there put on the Boar's Head Festival. Now, for, uh, I'd heard about it. I didn't know what it was or anything about it. And so one year, my wife had a 
Schmitz that was going to be in the Borset Festival, so we were supposed to go. So I said, well, I don't know. How long is it? Well, I'll find out. Well, I'll just find out it's about an hour. Okay. Well, that's an hour. I mean, it can't be. We can put up with anything for an hour. So I went in the 30th anniversary year of the Boar's Head Festival and sat and from the moment it was started to the moment it ended, I was enraptured. And when I when it was over, I got up and started kicking the pew. And uh, my wife said, have you gone crazy? What is wrong with you? She, she, I said, I'm mad. Why are you mad? Because they've been doing this 30 years, and I've been here. That was 11 years ago. And uh, since then, I have not only not missed, but I have been a, a missionary to tell people, particularly people over in Dallas who don't know about things going on in Fort Worth, that you need to go. So. It's this afternoon at 3 p.m. and at 5 p.m. Now, it does last just one hour. It is free. And there really are no bad seats because it is a pageant. And it's constantly moving around you. It's hard to explain why it's so meaningful. But I guarantee you, from the very beginning, from the first, from the first event of the pageant, of this festival, uh, you're going, what is going on? And it's a uh, it's constant, let's say a constant delight of color and sound and of a uh, message. So if you're not doing anything this afternoon, I recommend you go to Fort Worth University Christian Church, which is the TCD church there on university. And uh, you have to be there if you want to see about 2 o'clock, or if you're going to the 5 o'clock, you need to be there just after they, at 4 o'clock, just after they finish the first service. And uh, I don't think there's anybody here uh, that wouldn't be touched by it. Um, I'm, every year I'll take any number of people, uh, or encourage any number of people to go, and invariably people will say, that was really uplifting. It's the end of the Christmas season. We think Christmas ending on the 25th, but really ends on the 50th, and this is sort of that festival. So, uh, Boar's Head, Yule Log, Feast, a festival uh, not to be missed. If you can't make it this year, you need to go sometime. So, uh, end of, of now, except as is, is was there uh, yesterday, and uh, oh, y'all were there yesterday. Anybody want to speak to it? Well, <clears throat> it was phenomenal. And but I go every year. Ever since you introduced mm -hmm. it to me, I guess that was about oh nine. Yeah. That you were here, and you said if you don't have something to do this afternoon, go over there. Mm -hmm. And some of us yeah. took you up on it. Mm -hmm. And it is a very important part of my Christmas. And it is just amazing. I was just sharing these people that mm -hmm. when they ask you not to applaud until the end, you have to keep reminding yourself yeah. Yeah. because you really yeah. want to get yeah. up and yeah. give them a standing ovation yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so they do, many they do times. a great job of it. It's very really unusual. Mm -hmm. Most uh, boar's heads are done at Episcopal churches because it comes out of the Church of England. <coughs> but for some reason, these disciples of Christ over in Fort Worth uh, 41 years ago, decided they wanted to do it. And uh, they have done it with a vengeance. I mean, it's one of the finest in the country now. And every year. Every year. And they, uh, well, they have a, a, a board of a million dollars at least. And so, uh, something that people, particularly people love art, music, that kind of thing, it's, it's uh, always touches people in a different ways. Yes, ma'am. What, my grandson's seven. Mm -hmm. Would it be good? Oh, yeah, yeah. oh yeah. they have children yeah. in it and a couple dogs in it. Okay. Yes. They even have, they didn't have dogs in it. Yeah. Okay. Get there yeah, really it, get, it, get an house. When they say family friendly, it's I'll true. Yeah, yeah, it made, me, made me wonder how the uh, if their insurance company knows what they're doing. Yeah. 
cities that were models for religious activity down through the centuries. And uh, it, it, there are places which we need to be uh, understand and appreciate, but most particularly because Western civilization is founded on what came out of these three cities, most particularly American civilization. And so today I want to talk about Athens, and I want to talk about Alexandria, Egypt, and I want to talk about Rome. And uh, I have a, a cliffhanger for those of you that are willing to stick with this for three weeks. I'm going to explain in the third week how all of this ties back to all types of texts. There is a, uh, an interesting and very special connection between Texas in all three of these cities and the culture that they rep represent. So uh, hang in for that if, you, if you're willing to do it. Now, um, I want to start by talking about how Athens came to be. Now, Athens was a, a site very near the port, and, uh, but the, the um, Greeks are always looking for a place where there's a hill that they can put on, they can have their temple on top. This, uh, in this case, is called the Acropolis. And this is the reason that Athens is where it is. Now, one of the early invaders of the area were the famous Amazons. Now, the Amazons are, are unique uh, women in that they lived with women only, and uh, the Amazon women uh, did not have anything to do with men except once a year. Once a year they would visit a tribe of all men, and they would have, let's say, kind of get together, <laughs> all right. and then uh, nine months later, they have some children, and if the children were boys, they'd take them back to the men, and if they were girls, they would keep them. And then the next thing they did is they cauterized the right breast of each girl. According to the legend, the historian Herodotus tells us, they cauterized the right breast, why? So it wouldn't grow, why? So that, and they pulled back the arrow, the breast would not impede their shooting of the air. So Amazon means A, without, Maison, breast. Amazon. Now, uh, I got to thinking about this word when I was putting this together and I was wondering, wonder why Jeff Bezos chose the word Amazon for his company. And, uh, uh, the story of Jeff Bezos, by the way, is an interesting story. You know, founder of Amazon, which is now the largest company in the world uh, by capitalization. It's even bigger than Walmart. And uh, Jeff Bezos, I discovered, was not born Jeff Bezos. He was born Jeff Jorgensen, he had a Scandinavian father and, a, and a, an American mother. and. Uh, he was born in, or grew up in Houston. And as you might expect, he was a star student. And uh, did, did, it's not very, very bright, very bright guy. But anyway, his mother remarried 
a man named Bezos. And so Bezos adopted him, Jeff, and so he became Jeff Bezos. Anyway, so but he's a Texas boy, so uh, that's unique. Anyway, he went off to college in New England, I believe. And when that was over, he, would, he had this idea for an online distribution company. And the idea of an online distribution company had already been around. But what his idea was is that everything would be available at one site. And that was his ultimate goal. And uh, so he, he built, um, he, he decided that the best place to start a new company was Seattle, Washington. So he drove by himself in his car from New England to Washington, Seattle, and set up and called it Amazon, not after the women, but after the river that's named after the women in Brazil, because the Amazon, out of the Amazon, comes all of this cornucopia of, of things. And this idea of just the endless flow of merchandise is why he got the idea for Amazon. Now, th this is interesting to me in that he was using a mythical illusion, uh, ultimately, going back to this legendary founders of Athens. This is just one teeny tiny example of how Athens comes to influence our lives. Because more people uh, go to order things on Amazon than any place else. Uh, by far, actually. And uh, so Jeff Bezos had the right idea at the right time, and it, it's, it's been amazing. Now, I want to um, talk to you about one particular place in Athens as a way of explaining the enormity of the civilization, of the impact of the civilization, which is really stunning. Now, that place, of course, is the Acropolis and all the things that surround the Acropolis. Now, in this one snapshot, you can get an idea of all the things that the Greeks gave us, but primarily to this one city. All the great thinkers, all the great writers, everybody in the golden age of Athens was here at this spot. Now, let's, go, let's start at the beginning. We're going to go from the bottom to the top uh, through the famous four A's. The first A is the Agora. <coughs> Now the Agora, the only, we still have this word in English. In psychology, they talk about agoraphobia. Now if you have agoraphobia, what do you have fear of? It's the crowd. So guess what the Agora was? It's the marketplace. It's the marketplace. Yes. So people would go to the marketplace, and if you went there on a typical day, particularly market day, it would just be mocked. It'd just be wall wall. And if you didn't like people being around that many people, it made you very nervous and very full, very full of anxiety. So the Agora was the place of, of commerce. What's ironic, if you go there today, the Acropolis, which in the old days would just have a few people going out there and do religious uh, observances, you go up there today, it looks like there's a million people on top because all the cruise lines dump all the people out. They all go to the one place they want to see. They want to see the park on them. And so you go up there and it's just, you have to just, even though it's a big area on top, you have to kind of squeeze around and get through. It's really almost impossible to get a group picture because you can't get people together in this mess. And that where the Agora was, there's nobody there. It was empty field. So history brings us great irony. Uh, <laughs> if you came back to this place a thousand years from now, what do you suppose this will be? It'll probably still be here because it's made of concrete. Well, it might be a drug rehabilitation center, maybe a dare case center. Uh, the one thing I probably would guess it won't be is a unity church. 
Uh, <laughs> and the reason I can say that, I say that is because <coughs> in case you haven't been paying attention in the last 50 years, churches are dying at a rather staggering rate. And we're kind of, don't see that because we're too close to it. Because we don't see the long perspective of time. But anyway, uh, <coughs> the, the next most important hill is, of course, the famous Areopagus. Now, the Areopagus, Ares, of course, was the god of war, and Pegasus means hill. So the Areopagus is where the government took place. Now, the government, uh, being quite different from what we can think of, originally, the government had been like it is, has, was so, in so many places in the world, and that is some kind of monarchy. You'd have a king, and then the son of the king, and so forth. In other words, one, one person rule, better known as a dictatorship. Well, there was a man named Solon. Now Solon, about, this is about 500 years before the time of Christ, and Solon that's responsible more than anybody for the golden age of Athens. Solon had an idea that the citizens should decide not only who the ruler is, but also decide the important issues of, of the day, whether to build a road or a temple or whatever. And it's this kind of, of uh, revolutionary idea that you wouldn't think would would survive, but Solon was so persuasive, and despite many, many obstacles, he eventually put in a system that is the foundation for what we think of today as democracy or, or uh, Republican with a small r government, a government of the citizens. Now, we have to immediately explain that the concept of citizen at that time is very restricted compared to what it is today. A citizen in the Athenian world was a man, an adult man, who had some kind of property, property, property here defined as property and goods, so that Every year they would take a census and they would find out how much stuff you had. So if you had 500 measures of something valuable, so this could be bushels of wheat, this could be jars of wine, this could be uh, olive oil, it could be cattle, Anything that they call a measure, right? You had 500 of those. Then they, they called you a, this is a long word, get ready, Pentecostium adimnoi, which means the men who have 500. In other words, you were a 500 man. A 500 man meant that you were at the top of the system, which is basically a plutocracy. In other words, those folks that have money or the equivalent of money are the ones who do the ruling. They're the citizens. And so the Pentecostium, Pentecost, in this case, Pentecostium uh, means 500, and then a dimnoi, the man <coughs> that owned the, the 500 man. They would be citizens. Then they had the 300 men. These are called the horsemen or the uh, men of, who are wealthy enough to own a horse. And, but they had to have 300 measures of something. You see how the system worked. In other words, when they came around to check you out, you gathered together everything you had. You might even borrow stuff to make sure you had at least 500 or 300. And then it went down to 200, 200, so you're still a citizen. But when you get down to 100 or below, meaning 
you down to zero, to where you had nothing uh, of any consequence, then you were considered not a citizen. In other words, the, the government was run by the people who produced the wealth, or to put it another way, who had the wealth, or to put it another way, who had the gold, the golden rule. Those who have the gold rule. And uh, that's what exactly it was in Africa. Now you can criticize that, but what Solon did was revolutionary compared to what the way, the way it had been before. Before, it's basically kind of a tribal thing where uh, somebody becomes chieftain somehow and then that person just passes it down through the family. And uh, we have plenty of examples still today of monarchies and a few of them are absolute monarchies. Now in England, you have the monarchy, but the monarchy has no political power. It has great influence, but no political power. Uh, and uh, so that's how the English kind of worked it out. They kept the old system and the new at the same time. Uh, but anyway, all of this took place then on the Areopagus. So it was on the Areopagus they would come and vote. It's on the Areopagus, the very first jury trial, which was not 12, but 10 men, all of them citizens, and uh, they would decide whether a person was guilty of murder or some other great crime. And it was on the Areopagus where people would come and speak. In other words, if you were a visitor to, to Athens, they were interested in hearing about your culture, where you came from. And uh, when new ideas came through town, this is where somebody would speak. So who spoke on the Areopagus? None other than, of course, Paul, St. Paul. And he, uh, they, they listened very carefully to what he had to say. And basically, what he talked about is What's Christian? He explained his faith. And so this is one of the very first places Christianity is introduced to the world through Paul, because the influence of Athens was enormous. Whatever went on in Athens then spread to the Greek world. Then you have the Areopagus. Um, excuse me, Acropolis. Acro means high, polis means city like our words, police, political, and so forth. So the city, Acro High, the high city, the Parthenon. Now the Parthenon, the famous temple to Athena, why is it called Parthenon? Parthos means virgin. And non, of course, means temple. So it's the place of the virgin. And the virgin is at, at, at Athena. Who is the patron saint, or the patron goddess, better way of saying it, of Athens. Now this is really the center of the center. In other words, Athens is the center of the Greek world and the Parthenon is the center of that world. And they believed that it was Athena that protected them and then gave them their great power. Uh, they had a huge statue of her called the Palladium. The uh, Palladium comes from the word palace. Her, one of her many titles is Palace Athena. And Palace Athena, uh, she was a uh, very, very important because she is born not of a woman. She is a very, very strong misogynist. Mizo means to hate, gyno means womb. And of course, only women have wombs. So she was a very famous hater of women, even though she was a woman, because she wasn't born of a woman, and she repudiated uh, women at every turn. In fact, she said she honored men in all things except one thing. The one thing that Wendy did that she did not appreciate 
marriage. Because marriage tied men and women together. And I 